In this video, we're going to focus on the Fischer esterification reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So let's use acetic acid as an example and also ethanol. What product do you think we're going to get in this reaction? In the Fischer esterification reaction, you need an acid catalyst to speed up the reaction. Also, since this reaction is reversible, to drive it towards the right, you want to increase the concentration of the alcohol. So you want this to be in excess in order to drive the reaction towards the right. And the Fischer esterification reaction combines uh, carboxylic acid with uh, alcohol to create an ester. Now to draw the product, remove H2O. If you take away H2O and then connect the two together, you're going to get the ester. So basically, you could just replace the OH group with this group without the hydrogen. So this is a quick way in which to draw the ester. So that's the product of the reaction. Now let's work on some more examples. The next example that we're going to go over is the reaction between butanoic acid and one propanol. What is the product of this reaction? So all we need to do is get rid of water. Water is going to be the side product. So we just need to add this part to the carboxylic acid. So we should have a total of seven carbons. There's four carbons on the left side, three on the right. So now we have a total of seven. And that's how you can draw the product. Let's try one more example. What product will be formed if we mix benzoic acid with benzo alcohol? Go ahead and pause the video and draw the major product of this reaction. So once again, all we need to do is remove water. And then just connect these two portions together. So this is the product of the reaction, plus H2O. So now you know how to quickly tell what product you'll get during the Fischer esterification reaction. It helps if you put the two hydroxyl groups facing each other. And then you could just connect these two groups. Now let's go over the mechanism of the Fischer esterification reaction. So what is the first step of this reaction? Let's put acetic acid with methanol. So this is going to give us methyl acetate as the product. The first step for any reaction under acidic conditions is usually protonation. Now we have HDL. Now here's a question for you. Which oxygen atom will be protonated? Is it the carbonyl oxygen or the hydroxyl oxygen? What would you say? To answer this question, we need to draw the resonance structure. This oxygen can donate a pair of electrons, causing that pi bond to break. And as a result, we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. So this oxygen bears a negative charge, and the oxygen below it bears a positive formal charge. So because the resonance structure for this oxygen is positive, that means that it doesn't have an affinity for the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom is partially positive. Chlorine is partially negative. So therefore, this oxygen with a negative charge is attracted to the partially positive hydrogen atom, since we know opposites attract. So therefore, this is the oxygen that's going to be pronated by the acid. So therefore, in the first step, 
this oxygen is going to grab a hydrogen, expelling the chlorine atom. So chlorine is going to leave as chloride. So now the carboxylic acid is activated towards nucleophilic addition. So at this point, methanol, which has an oxygen with a partial negative charge, is attracted to the carbon atom. Because this oxygen bears a partial positive charge, it's going to have a greater pull on the electrons of the carbon atom, which makes that carbon more electron deficient. And therefore, it's going to be more partially positive. So it's activated towards nucleophilic addition. So the methanol group is going to attack the carbon, and the pi bond is going to break. So this is going to produce a tetrahedral intermediate that looks like this. So now this oxygen is neutral. This oxygen, however, bears a positive charge now. So let's go ahead and make some space. Let's get rid of a few things. So what do you think the next step of this mechanism will be? What should we do next? Now, in order to get the ester, we need to keep the methyl group with the oxygen. And we need to get rid of one of the hydroxyl groups. Everything up to this point is still reversible. This oxygen can use a lone pair to form a double bond and expel this group. Right now, it won't kick out the hydroxyl group because it's not a good leaving group. If it leaves, it's going to leave as hydroxide, OH-, which should not exist under acidic conditions. And if it does exist, the concentration will be very, very, very low. Right now, this is a good leaving group. In order to make it a bad leaving group, we need to get rid of the hydrogen. And we need to transfer the hydrogen onto the hydroxyl group so we can make that a better leaving group. So how can we transfer the hydrogen from one part of the molecule to the other part? What would you say? The best way to do that is by means of the solvent, which we have plenty of ethanol molecules, I mean methanol molecules, in a solution. So methanol is going to grab a hydrogen, and this bond will break. So now this is no longer a good leaving group. So now this molecule is protonated. And it's going to transfer a hydrogen to the hydroxyl group. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to be this particular molecule. There could be another molecule that looks like this, but somewhere in this vicinity, next to the hydroxyl group. You have billions and billions of methanol molecules, many of which are protonated. So this hydroxyl group is going to take a hydrogen from a protonated methanol molecule, and it's going to turn into a good leaving group. So let's draw the structure that we currently have. So now this is OH2+, plus, and we're going to kick it out in the next step. So we can use the lone pair from the hydroxyl group to form a double bond, expel an H2O. So once water leaves, what we have here is a protonated ester molecule. So the last step is we need to remove the hydrogen, which we can easily do with uh, methanol. You can also use water, but there's much more uh, methanol molecules in a solution than H2O molecules. So we're going to use methanol to take off the hydrogen, producing the desired ester. So now we have methyl acetate as the product. And after this absorbs the hydrogen, this is going to be in the form of CH3OH2+, which is equivalent of 
rounded this way, methanol plus HCl. So we've regenerated the HCl. Therefore, HCl is the acid catalyst, since it was not consumed in a reaction. So that's it for the Fischer esterification mechanism reaction. Hopefully, uh, you understand it. So thanks for watching.